have to reset. Okay, dear friends, uh, this is uh, the first live broadcast uh, from Guide of Egypt, Muhammad Ibrahim. As I told you, I am uh, trying to do this uh, for a long time, and uh, in the late uh, or in the last ten days, I managed to finish the uh, procedures, and I already bought the uh, system from Zoom. So I am hoping to do a weekly uh, broadcast um, and share with you uh, all our thoughts and passion and ideas about ancient Egypt and modern Egypt, either from the uh, field of uh, history and archaeology, uh, and also the field of uh, tours and uh, giving the truth about ancient Egypt and modern Egypt. And I am very honored to have uh, Erica Mermuz in the first show. Hello, Erica. Hello, Mohammed. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. How are you, my friend? I'm very good. How are you doing? I'm very good and uh, very excited. Uh, I'm used to be um, a guest in many different shows. So this is my first time to be a host. So I hope I can do uh, well. I'm sure you'll do wonderful. <laughs> You're an expert at tour, so. Okay, so when I contacted you and uh, told you that we are going to have um, uh, this kind of show uh, about Egypt, uh, what was your first feeling uh, or what was, was your first thought about what you are going, you said to yourself, what I'm going to talk when Mohammed mentioned Egypt? I'm very excited about it. I think that it's very important for us to explore the acoustics and the active way that maybe the ancient Egyptians used acoustics. Um, and I feel like there's not many uh, tours that explore that because there, a lot of people are more interested in the, the technical aspects of you know how things were built, but not necessarily exploring why. So mm -hmm. I think that it's really important for musicians and since these places were built for acoustics, it seems, and a lot of engineers would agree, that we can actively look into that. And I think musicians might have more of a niche in that than people might suspect. And I think it should be explored. So for me, it's very exciting because I don't see that in a lot of other tours. So I'm trying to say that, <laughs> uh, yes, many of the tours, yes, they focus and. When I say tours, I'm talking about our style of tours. I'm right. not talking about the mainstream tours. Uh, so many of the tours, they focus on the uh, technical part and they may don't care much about the, uh, if I can call it the spiritual part or the reason why those uh, the, uh, sites or uh, uh, buildings are built. But I agree with you. I always say we have a complete circle and half of it is technology. The second half is spirituality. And each one leads to the other one. Right. Technology read, uh, leads to buildings uh, and to uh, a kind of techniques can help us with the resonant and with the um, healing and the raising the consciousness. And by reaching this level, it will help us to uh, energize our uh, brains which will lead us to spirituality again so it right one circle yes how many, how many times you have been uh, to egypt uh this will be my third ah your third so this tour next march uh, march 2019 will be your third. Or april so you're, april <laughs> <laughs> you're rushing things just a little yeah. <laughs> so you have been twice already uh, in egypt mm -hmm. and uh, what was your feeling about doing this tour now for the third time in three years after the other? Um, it's very interesting because every time you go to Egypt, you some things happen that you don't expect and you learn things that you never expected to. And a lot of it is 
it just happens organically. Like you'll plan to go to a site, maybe like things get changed and it always happens for a reason. And I feel like for this tour, I'm going to come with more experience. And every time you go there, you learn more and more. And especially with acoustics, I feel like there's every site you go to, um, with Dendera and if you go to Abydos or wherever you are, there's something that, about acoustics that's very important to each site. So I'm excited because now we're going to so many places that I haven't been because this is a very big tour, 16 days. So I'm excited to explore the places I haven't been to yet and excited to go revisit the places I have because every time you go, you learn something new and you find out something new about the acoustics of it. So, so have you seen tour with this uh, uh, number of days before, 16 days? No, we were 10. We were 10 or 12 oh. before. So this is this is a big I tour. Mean, for me, the maximum uh, tours, uh, the maximum number of days I did was 14. 14, so yeah. This is my first time to do 16 days. Right, and we're going to places that are off the map. Like a lot of play people don't go to Abu Simbel anymore because it's so... It's a far distance or they don't go to Amarna and, and we're including all of that. So mm -hmm. I'm super excited and I, I haven't even like mentioned the half of them that we're going to. Uh, we're going to Hermopolis, uh, Tuna yes. El Gabel. I'm hoping I'm not butchering the pronunciation. <laughs> all right, night, Hermopolis, which is right, the right. of Ashmunin mm. and Tuna yes. El Gabel. Yes. Yep, and El Minya. And I always love to uh, um, explain this name, the meaning of the name, Tuna El Gabal. El Gabal means mountain mm -hmm. so, in Arabic language. So most of the people don't understand what does it mean, Tuna. It's not Tuna fish, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so Tuna is one of the ancient Egyptian words from uh, the origin Ta Tenen. Taten or Tatenen means mountain also. Right. So the Arabs call, call it Tuna El Gabal. So they were trying to refer that the word El Gabal is Tuna. So it means Tuna El Gabal means the mountain, the mountain. Okay. Right. So I'm going to share um, the itinerary of our tour in April 2019. And we, can, we will give good idea about some details right and also if anyone is hearing us uh, if you would like to ask any questions in the feed we welcome any questions you might have and we can answer them live which is always a nice opportunity because that doesn't always happen <laughs> so you can see the screen um i can see on facebook i can okay so, of course, uh, this tour uh, is uh, hosted by Guide of Egypt, Mohammed Ibrahim and Erika Mermuz. And I must apologize for you, my friend. I forgot to add your uh, logo, but... It, oh, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. But you will find uh, all the details here at um, Mermuz website. I can add that too, just in case. Let's see. Okay. You will see it here at the website. And I put it in the feed if anybody else wants. Yes. All the details. Yep. Okay. So the first thing, when you leave your home country and arrive to Cairo airport, this is what we considered as day one. And you will meet one of our representatives. Uh, this is Osama, my friend. Uh, Osama is our airport representative and he the one will help you with uh, all the formalities and help you to get your entry visa and as American citizen and most of the European citizens, you can buy the Egyptian visa with $25 from the airport. It is something easy, so you don't need to contact the embassy 
or to have any procedures before. Yes. And How I do you find this uh, kind of service, Erica? Um, it is so effortless. I can't even explain enough. In fact, somebody just contacted me asking about this specifically how that works and they were a little nervous and I said I've done this will be my third time and Osama first of all is the most wonderful helpful sweetest man and literally as soon as you come down the hallway after you get off your plane he'll greet you with the sign he takes care of the visa actually and it's mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are confused about um, if you get your visa ahead of time, because when you buy your plane ticket, they'll always try to say you can't enter this country without a visa, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But you get it in Egypt. If you try to do it online ahead of time, you're going to run into uh, overcharging issues. And as you had told me before, it is a tourist trap. Um, so I, you just wait till you get there. And it's done literally in three, mm -hmm. four minutes. Exactly. It's easiest yes. process. And then you're literally taken to your hotel. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I experienced the uh, disappearance of uh, this service <laughs> when I <laughs> started outside Egypt and I had to help myself in all the uh, uh, things and uh, the, in each corner dealing with any official. That's why I was like envying <laughs> you guys that you have yes. this service <laughs> when you were here in Egypt. Yes, it's it's absolutely the easiest process ever and it's not just at the airport when you're being received also when you're taken to the airport on your way home mm -hmm. every single aspect of travel mm -hmm. from any hotel everything is absolutely effortless and seamless and it always has been yes um, because on, osama, on our tours so. yeah osama is going to meet osama or somebody else not because we do have many now uh, uh, assistants and according to the, um, the schedule, so it could be Osama or someone else. So they meet you inside the terminal, not outside the home. Right. Mm -hmm. As soon as you step out from the bus or you get out from the airplane, you meet the person who will, as you said before, he will like help you and will give you, uh, it's like oxygen, as if you're, you need oxygen, <laughs> he is the oxygen. <laughs> Yes, they're very helpful, and they're all they're all so sweet and so helpful. I I never have been happier with any type of service or somebody helping you out at like a hotel or anywhere in like in the U.S. And I have been in Egypt, mm -hmm. and it's your staff. Okay. So you. congratulations. This is the uh, picture of <laughs> the uh, Egyptian entry visa. This is the one you will uh, get on your passport. Mm -hmm. As I said before, it costs twenty five U.S. dollars. Right. And, the, and they were going to raise the price, weren't they? And they never did. So that's another thing. It's... Look, they were about to raise the price, but then they said no, because in tourism, as you know, we don't sell tours tomorrow or next uh, week or sometimes next month. No, we, we have long terms, long plans. And they understood this at the end and they told us, uh, OK, by the beginning of 2020, we will raise the price, but not during 2019. Oh, okay. Okay, so if we have a small number of people arriving on one time, we're going to take uh, one small micro bus like this one. But if we have a big group arriving together, we're going to have a big bus uh, driving to the hotel. And in Cairo, or in Giza, exactly west of Cairo, we are dealing with two main hotels, uh, Lumeridian Pyramids Hotel. So you have been to this hotel before right yes mm -hmm. okay how do you uh or what is your own impression about this hotel especially the uh pyramids view rooms it's phenomenal i love this hotel i'm very comfortable there because it was actually the first place i stayed when i went to Egypt the first time so it's like coming home every time i go there um but the views from the rooms are spectacular the rooms from mm -hmm the outer where the pool is and the there's like a little restaurant area is phenomenal. You basically are at the foot of the pyramids and that will be your view for the first couple of days we're there. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like right in the heart of Cairo. So mm -hmm. it's like your first taste of Egypt and of the people and of the culture. So, and, and as you know, nice. as you know, we make sure that uh, 
our people get the view in any hotel. So if we are near the pyramids, we must have pyramids view rooms. If we are near the Nile, we must get Nile view rooms. Because truly, I would do the same to myself. I, I won't be happy if I'm next to the pyramids and I have a backside area or uh, uh, another view on any street. I would prefer to see the pyramids as soon as right. I open the curtains. Okay. Yes, especially if you don't see it every day. <laughs> I have to say you're a bit spoiled. You see this pyramid all the time. <laughs> Actually, I feel very bad nowadays. I, my, in my balcony and many windows here in my apartment, I can see the pyramids. But it seems that uh, this week it will be the end of this view because oh. there is a higher building now is being built in front of me. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> I need to go to a higher floor. Yeah, you'll have to move to a higher floor. It's definitely for first for yeah. sure. You don't have a, you can't cut off the real estate development there, huh? Of course. So as you can see from the picture, people can actually see the pyramids while they are uh, on their beds. Yes. So they don't need uh, to go outside to the balcony. You know, they can see it from inside the room. Right. And there are also many other vantage points from the hotel that you can sneak off to and go see an even closer view than maybe your room. Um, but everywhere you go, you will have that view. And mm -hmm. it's truly exhilarating. And it's, it, when the first time I went to uh, Le Meridian, I was, I, I think I cried actually. I was with Jen and we were teary because we were amazed at the view. Mm -hmm. So there is another option sometimes when we have uh, early flight, okay, we use a hotel in downtown, which for me also is a, a different experience because always we use two hotels uh, in Cairo during the stay, one at the beginning, one at the end. So it must be one near the pyramids. So sometimes I change the system to take one in downtown and one in, uh, in Giza. I believe you didn't have uh, this experience before to stay in downtown. Um, no, we always do Mena House and the um, Le Meridian. Mm -hmm. But you know, maybe in 2020, uh, in our uh, tour, The Sacred Sound of Ancient Egypt 3, I may offer you to go to Steigenberger. It's a very new hotel less than one year old, and it is in the heart of downtown. It will show you the medieval Cairo. Oh, that's interesting. And, and you will see the, the, the sleepless streets, the uh, famous Egyptian coffee shops. You know, some of our co coffee shops are more than 200 years old. 200? 200, you... yes. More than that, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, uh, many of the buildings itself also around this date were built around 1820, uh, 1830. Uh, and they were designed like the French style. Uh, that, that, that uh, you know, the, uh, how do you call it in English? The Victory Arc, that famous uh, French arc. Okay, I forgot okay. the name of it. So it was, it, many of the buildings were designed the same shape like this. Uh, French oh, yes. Style. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And also, it has a nice view. It, uh, the view is the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Okay. Uh, the, the new grand? No, no, the, uh, the, the, one, original. the one in Cairo, yeah, the original okay. one. Okay. But truly, the hotel is fabulous. Steigenberger is a German company, and it has great quality, the food and the uh, amenities. And in every inch in the hotel is very shiny, very bright, very clean. It looks beautiful. And this is our masterpiece. Yes, this is the mm -hmm. one. I, I yes. Poor Mohammed, I nag him about this hotel. <laughs> I love this hotel. If I can say we are going to put so many important sites in this tour, like the pyramids, like Karnak Temple, like Abu Simbel, I can truly say adding the Mida House is something maybe equal to things. 
isn't yes. it? Um, it's breathtaking, and I, I haven't. I, I, everybody I speak to, especially people that have gone on the tour with us, were like, "This hotel is magnificent," and it's not just that it has the pyramid view rooms. It is literally on the call. I, I, I'm not sure what you call the road that goes right up to the pyramids themselves. It is on that road beyond the checkpoint. So it is literally as close to the pyramids as you can possibly get. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the restaurant, you can sit basically at the base of the pyramids and you can see every single individual stone from sitting mm -hmm. at, at this hotel or in the gardens. It is breathtaking. And it was originally created for royalty, am I correct? A palace for royalty, for visiting dignitaries from other countries. So it is basically a palace. It's absolutely stunning. Look, I can, I can say it is not only a visual sense, but also you feel the energy of the pyramids. Yes, you are basically sleeping on the Giza Plateau at night. You are, yeah. you are on the Giza Plateau and you can feel the energy. It is amazing. There is no other place like the Giza Plateau in the world. I will say that with confidence. <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And also the same view, the pyramids view, even closer than uh, the Meridian. Yep, even closer. Yeah. I think this is one of the actual rooms we are using in uh, our uh, tools. So it's not just uh, an advertising. No, this is one of the rooms. Yep. Uh, one of our clients uh, took the photo. Maybe you, I'm not very sure. And I said, did not take this particular one, so mm -hmm. somebody else can take credit for that. <laughs> and the, and this that, is, I love that photo. That, that just sums up the Mena House right there. Mm -hmm. Ah, So after staying at the Mena House or the Meridian in day one, so day two must be the visit of the, the Giza Plateau or Giza Pyramids. Yes. Because sometimes I see people doing this itinerary, they stay close to Giza Plateau, but day one or day two, they go to Saqqara. Yeah, that seems silly to me as a tourist. That would seem silly mm -hmm. because that is the initial draw to Egypt. It's you want to see it first and at the end. So you get both. Exactly. They, they like, like to tease their people. <laughs> You're the pyramids, but you can't quite go there yet. No, mm -hmm. you go there first. Yes. So going to Giza Plateau means we are going to visit the three pyramids, uh, the Great and the Second and the Third Pyramid, and the Sphinx. Yes. But this is, won't be the, the only time we visit uh, Giza Plateau in our tour. We're going to visit the Giza Plateau again in the same tour, but the last day. But we're gonna talk about it later. And the Sphinx. So when you came uh, with me two years ago and last year, uh, you expected to hear the mainstream stories or you understood you're gonna hear something different. Oh, I completely yeah. understood I was gonna hear something different. That's why I booked my tour with you. <laughs> because the mainstream story, of course, never rang true with me as it, probably doesn't with most people who we are associated with. Um, mm. And also, it's surprising when you go there, coming from the first time I went there, not really expecting to see everything that you see and understanding the size of the Giza Plateau and how much more is going on there than what you would normally see, for example, on television or whatnot. And mm. the Valley Temple, I found extremely interesting. And honestly, before I went there, I really wasn't familiar with it. And mm. it's a huge part of the missing history, I think, of the Giza Plateau and the possible redating of the Giza Plateau because it's so much older. And it's one of the things I always point out is when you're first walking down the causeway by the Sphinx and entering the Valley Temple, I had seen so many programs and read so many books about Egypt that when I walked down, I was like, this looks like the Osirian, which I had never even been to at that point, but that I hadn't really been so exposed to the Valley Temple. And as soon as I looked at it, I was like, this is the same builders. And the Osirian mm -hmm. is probably accepted as being old as well. And it's very interesting. <laughs> 
that when you go there that mm. all, and all of the um the the holes and the and the wells and the the square deep i don't even know what you would call them the pits that are all over the geese plateau you can clearly see that there are uh, like caves and actually um, it's huge place yeah it's huge and it's very very precisely built and how deep do some of those go like we don't even really know because they haven't been cleaned out all the way some of the the deep pits all over the plateau they're like there, perfect rectangles there is a, a, a tunnel or a, or a deep shaft i couldn't figure out how deep it is and uh, using the flashlight strong right. flashlight it didn't reach the end so it's bottomless it pit <laughs> Yes. Okay. So it's it's very I mean it's it's mind boggling how big and mm -hmm. probably we haven't even scratched the surface if mm -hmm. I'm sure if it was tunneled out more and excavated more we would see a lot more. I posted the, this picture I think last week and I said uh, there are around 5000 tombs in Giza plateau. Yeah, someone told me don't use the word tombs. He's right, but we are using the the last the word or the meaning of the last use of the place. Yes, the, of course there are no, but there are some uh, buildings are actual tombs right. because we say is yes, there are some buildings are uh, being reused many many times, but there are some buildings which uh, reflect very poor quality and uh, reflect regular quality dynastic quality, so we are sure they are tools. Right. So in this picture, we can see the three main pyramids, and we can see, of course, the Great Sphinx. And you know, I never felt okay to call it Great Sphinx. I like to call it Sphinx only, okay? I know it, it is the biggest one, uh, but I think because it is, um, it is the, the building or the statue, we call it the Sphinx. I know there are, there, there are smaller versions of it, smaller statues, we call it Sphinx, but as copies of it. Right. That's why to call it the Great Sphinx, I think we are trying to take it out of uh, the group or like, I'm not sure, but <laughs> okay. I'm trying to say, I love to call it just Sphinx. Just the Sphinx, the Sphinx. <laughs> um, actually, we have a question from Renee. Okay. Our mutual friend, good friend, Renee. Um, he asks, who is this King Menace? And there is a reason he is asking. And I, and if I'm assuming correctly, that it was the first King in the Kings list for on the Abydos cartouche? Yes. On the, on the Abydos- um, Abydos King list. Hieroglyphs, yeah. Yes. Uh, the name is written Mina or Mini, M, N I or M N E. So uh, we add vowels. So sometimes we call it Mina or Mini. And in the Greek uh, pronunciation, they add S, so it became Minus. And I think they had a king later in the uh, Greek uh, history called Minus or Mianis, something like this. Not necessarily that they're not the same person then. Of course, no, but I'm seeing it's a Kobe. Like, yep. uh, the, yeah, copy. Uh, yeah. So Mina is. Uh, just the name, by the way, we didn't find any tomb or anything talks about or uh, showing that some the owner is called Mina. Just the name written in the Abydos King list and other lists. But so far, it is just a name. Okay, now so this is the first one on the according to the list, yes, because he's yeah. the first name on the list. Okay, now. How old would that be? Because I've heard 36,000 years is the actual, if you dated it. Look, according to the mainstream uh, stories, it will be 3,200 BC. Yep. But according to Turin uh, papyrus, uh, to um, uh, the uh, Egyptica book written by uh, Manitone, it will be 36,000 BC. 36,000 BC, okay. That's and we are not talking about Mina himself, we are talking about the first Egyptian ruler. Okay. Okay. Because I so thought he was, so I got a little confused okay. there. Back to our tour. Here is, okay. um, we <laughs> will talk about the Great Pyramid, we will talk about the angles, we will talk about the height, the stones, 
what is the design inside the pyramid. And of course, we are not going to tell you it was built to be a strong tomb uh, to keep the body of the king. No, we are going to talk in many levels, the technology and the acoustic design. And in the Grand Gallery, you will see uh, a great example of the shape of the acoustic. How was your feeling when you get inside the Great Pyramid for the first time? Um, I was completely blown away, obviously, just, mm -hmm. just from being there. Um, as far as the way sound travels in there, um, mm -hmm. it's probably the most acoustically live place I have ever been. Even places that are built for acoustics here, like uh, uh, I've sung in many halls and um, the Academy of Music in Philadelphia is one of them, and that is known for its acoustics. It pales in comparison. It's absolutely mm -hmm. incredible. And then the way the Grand Gallery is actually shaped is ideal. It's like textbook mm -hmm. on how to build an acoustic area. And it, it's, it just completely blows you away. It is the most incredible feeling that you'll ever have. Um, I've actually, one of the analogies I've used to people is when you go inside of the Great Pyramid, it is almost like a drug. Like you just want to stay there and all you can think about when you leave is that you want to go back. And I think that anybody who's been there can attest to that. It is, and it's not, that's not a usual feeling you get from going inside of a structure. So it, I think it's a combination of things. It's not just obviously the acoustics, it's how it was built. It's the materials it was that were used to build it. Um, where it is, where exactly it is on the on the Giza Plateau, where it is on planet Earth, I believe all of these things come together and coalesce into this incredible structure that is so technologically advanced. Mm -hmm. It's and the way the feeling that it gives you when you're in there is akin to almost like 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 a drug. I I've, I've <laughs> it is so amazing. Remind me. How long was your visit inside the Great Pyramid? It's two. Um, when we go privately inside of the pyramid, it's two hours. A so privacy. we have two hours private with our group inside the Great Pyramid. Uh -huh. So uh, are we going to have uh, the same option in this tour? Absolutely. Yes. Two hours inside Absolutely. the Great Pyramid. Not only inside the Great Pyramid, it's going to be in, in Giza Plateau. Only our group enjoying the whole place for two hours. Yes. So we literally have mm -hmm. the entire pyramid to ourselves. And hopefully we can still do it on the full moon. Sometimes things happen with scheduling, but no matter what, that will happen, the private time in the pyramid. But it might even be on a full moon, and the energy then will be even more off the charts. If I mean, you've probably been there before uh, on a full moon. I haven't. <laughs> Close, within a day or two. So but, I could uh, provide uh, this um, show with some pictures only about the pyramids, but I wanted to show you that we are going to make lectures and we will give you deep details about uh, the uh, ancient Egyptian history and sites. So we're going to compare between the pyramids and each other and uh, talk about the uh, Egyptian rulers and if they are really... Uh, can be related to those buildings or no, or they are the original builders or they just add their names or what. That's why I made sure to give you some uh, photos or a hint about this. Yes. Day three, we're gonna visit a very important place, my hometown, Sakkara. I am originally from a place called Badrashin, which is the big town for many sites, big town for Memphis, for Saqqara, for Dahshur, for Abu Sir. So that is all uh, small parts from the big town Badrashi. So when I was young, this was my background area. This is where I used to go and play with the sand and uh, uh, running and chasing each us. Okay. So Saqqara, what are your memories at Saqqara? Saqqara is very interesting and I feel like it is, um, there's a lot of things going on there from my end acoustically. I remember the 
quote unquote healing hospital and you have these niches in the wall where you can hear things going on and vibrations and sounds and you can um, say things in one area and hear it somewhere else. It's, it's absolutely insane how they built this. And it, there's so many different places at Saqqara. And in fact, when we went, um, the first time we went, we were in another place. Like we went to the, what we called the healing hospital. Of course, we went to the step pyramid and the pyramid of Unis, which is really beautiful inside. The inscriptions are gorgeous. Um, and then the next time we went somewhere, I mean, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. I would like to go underneath the pyramid of Saqqara. That would be really nice because I don't think a lot of people know about, you know, the vault and all of those large catacombs underneath. Mm-hmm. And I'd really like to explore those. So. <laughs> but, this is going to be <laughs> advertising. Uh, listen, my friends, if we have good number of people in this tour, I can do private permission going under Saqqara. Right. And so, yeah, that, that would be very interesting. Okay. There's a lot of places that we do go that we do get private permissions and we go places that we don't even advertise on the tour. Um, and depending on what site this can happen, sometimes, you know, things just fall together and we're able to do that. So that's another thing to keep in mind is that we get a lot of um, unprecedented accesses to places that normal tours can't go. So that's a, another little fact I'd like to. Like this place, as an example, I wanted to put this picture because this is near Ones uh, Pyramid. It's a, a tomb. And it had the name Ones. This is the name Ones here in the uh, screen. But most of the people don't know this place and don't go there. And I always loved to take people there so we can be very close to the ancient Egyptian writings. And we will be actually inside the, the four walls. And we um, feel or we will be very close to this kind of beauty. Okay, so yes, as you say, we take people uh, off beaten paths. Yes. And we, uh, yes, we show them the, the deep layers, not only the history, but also the site itself. Yes. Uh, and now, uh, this is the most important. Oh, the Serapium. How can I forget yes. the Serapium? <laughs> the Serapium is amazing. It's mind boggling as well. It's a mystery. The Serapium is a is a mystery. Uh-huh. I visited the Serapium for I don't know maybe one hundred times now or more. Uh, every time I feel the same like the first time. Every time I walk and feel surprised like the first time, and every time look and care and try to uh, f- look to the corners. I can tell you I know every corner now, but every time I go and I keep looking to the same corners, to the same sides, as if my first time. And about the feeling, I can't explain or I can't even give a hint about the feeling, but truly going under the ground, because this tunnel is under the ground, and uh, having uh, the uh, the presence of the uh, energy and the feeling of those granite boxes, will make you feel great. And you can um, uh, you can even go inside one of them, right? Is that allowed, the one? No, it's not allowed. No, it's not allowed. But we can go uh, around. We can- Yeah, uh, you can walk around. Well, you can go in the actual room. That's what I meant. Yes, the, the room itself. And it's- uh, This is the new ticket. Mysterious. The prices awesome. are getting higher. Now it used to be 100 pounds. Now it is 150. Oh, and I would like to also include in what you just said that the prices to get into all these sites and when, you know, you have the entry fees to get into certain sites is included in the price of the tour. So you don't have to worry about shelling out money for all of these separate sites. It's actually included. This is an old map for the Serapium. It shows a new section. Actually, it is not new, but new for us. It oh. is being rediscovered now. Okay, so this is the main area, and this one it is under the entrance itself. Okay, so this is now this is an old picture. I think uh, this is around 150 years old. I found this 
and it shows that the serapium is bigger than we think. Oh yes, because I remember in the once part of the serapium at the end, there's where the wall is, there was a big door. Is that where mm -hmm. that area yeah. was? In the new section, yes. Right. Okay. This whole structure is under the ground. And when was this open, this new section? Just, just this year? It's not open or, yet. Oh, it's no. not, but it will be? Will be, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. could be the first maybe. <laughs> Day four, we go to Dashur, the Pent Pyramid and the Red Pyramid. And it is quite experienced to go inside the Red Pyramid, which is harder a little bit than the Great Pyramid, it's yes. longer. Okay, but if you uh, will go to the subterranean room at the Great Pyramid, that is a great challenge. Okay, right. but going to Dashur, you go to a virgin land because no corruption, no vendors, no camels, no horses. So you feel you are in a, a clean environment. Right. Okay. This is the Red Pyramid, which is very similar to uh, the Great Pyramid at Giza Plateau. Yes, the Red Pyramid. Mm -hmm. is... I'm very curious to investigate more of the mica that was all over the area. I find mm -hmm. that very interesting. Okay, me too. Because uh, I used to see it, but um, for unknown reason, I wasn't interested until I met Nassim Haramin and we started yeah. to talk about the mica and what is the effect of mica on the, uh, the side of the pyramid. Uh, this is one of the new sites you are going to see. Or have you been to Alexandria last year? We had, no, we went to Alexandria last ah. year. Yes, we did. Catacomb. Okay. <laughs> Alexandria is always a great uh, place to break the, um, I will not call it routine, but to give you something new, something fresh. You go to the uh, north of Egypt and you uh, go to the north coast and you see what they call it Greco-Roman sites, which I call it ancient Egyptian. Okay. And the end of this tour, do you remember the end of this day, what happened? Did you, the seafood restaurant. <laughs> and then we also went to the Roman amphitheater. Yes. The catacombs, sure. which were very interesting, the catacombs. And you remember the spot there, the acoustic? Oh, yes. uh, the acoustic, this. the little acoustic spot. It's very interesting. It you, you stand in this one little section, probably like about three foot in diameter, and oh. It's basically like a little bit of a reverberation echo, almost like it creates an echo chamber and you can hear yourself mm -hmm. echo and then everybody who's sitting anywhere in the amphitheater can hear you as if you were miked. But of course mm -hmm. there are no microphones, but the way they built it with precision, it mm -hmm. has that effect so that, you know, you, you can be heard anywhere in that area. So if someone will tell me, oh, Muhammad, those sites are not acoustic or they are not lab, uh, prepared or uh, were made for uh, resonant, I will take them there to this spot. <laughs> There's a couple places I would take them all over the place to show that it's not just in one area. Yes, right. it's it's really interesting. And I still, I still have to go through the audio and the video from our tour last year because I tried to capture this effect on video and with the mics that I had at the time. So mm -hmm. I will put that together and I will post it very, very and soon. It is. This is the great end of this day. <laughs> the fish uh, market or yeah. the, the fish restaurant, seafood restaurant. And I promise you is a very delicious meal, uh, right. fish and shrimp and calamari and uh, soup. But if you uh, have a certain diet, we have alternative, but you're gonna miss this beautiful meal. Right, okay. and at the view of the sea, and also you can, I believe from the restaurant, we could also see the new uh, uh, library of Alexandria and most of mm -hmm. the city, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And after returning from Alexandria and spend the day at, I believe at the Mina House, we're gonna drive to Elmenia. Ilmenia, uh, which is the city of uh, Amarna and Ashmonin or Hermopolis and Tun al Gabal and Bani Hassan. Ilmenia has great history and uh, lots of tombs and temples and sites. So we will arrive to 
uh, Almania, the first thing we do before we go to the hotel, visiting Akhenaton and Nefertiti. This is definitely a new site for you. Yes, I have not been here, so I'm very excited about it. Uh -huh. And this tomb in particular, if I can call it a tomb, it is for I, I believe he the one who became uh, king later. And the floor, on the floor of this tomb, there is a small hole and it, it uh, how do you call it? There is air comes out from this hole, like an air condition. Right. So if you hand, you feel warm air in winter time and cold air in summertime. Now, does that mean that there's rooms underneath or is that just the way they built it for climate control? If you... uh, it could be a room, it could be a long tunnel underneath, but it's something connected with outside. That's yes. why it, it uh, provides the place with ventilation. And by the way, when we are talking about acoustic and sounds and resonant, those are musicians, blind yes. musicians. So they were their main senses will be about hearing. Right. Yeah, losing their sights, so their ears is going to be sharper. So this is another evidence that uh, resonant and uh, music was very important in ancient. Yes. This is the scene from Bani Hassan tombs. We're going to see some different uh, creatures, dogs. And you will be surprised that most of the kinds of dogs we have nowadays are originally ancient Egyptians. Even what they call it, the German dog, the uh, even the Lulu dog, that small one is ancient Egyptian. Dog. <laughs> um, here is the city. The day after, we're going to stay the night in Elmenia, in Horus Hotel, very nice hotel. Maybe not very fancy, but it is very clean, very nice, very friendly. Okay. Yes. And the uh, coffee shop of this hotel is great because it is overlooking the Nile. So I'm gonna have some tea or coffee or juice with the presence of the Nile. And the day after, we're gonna take our bags and leave the hotel uh, to the highway to Abydos. But in the way, we're gonna visit Hermopolis and Tunal Gabal. Hermopolis is the city of Tos or Tohut, as we say it in Arabic language, and Tos is the Ibe spirit. This is my own picture, and I captured the bird here in Hermopolis' main uh, building, or main temple. This is the main um, site in Tunal Gabal, called Bet Osiris, uh, tomb or temple. And we arrive at, to Abydos at this night. Uh, I think you, you saw this hotel before, but you didn't stay in, in this hotel, right? No, we stayed. We stayed, we stayed. there. Ah, yes. We, uh, I, yes, mm. I love this hotel. It's one of my favorites. Uh -huh. This hotel, they are genius who designed the hotel, and they made it to look like an Egyptian temple. And they call it Beran, House of Life. They have a, okay. there's a really good acoustics there too. They have those two little meditation rooms behind the hotel. Um, mm -hmm. I actually recorded a live, uh, me singing live there, and it's one of mm -hmm. my videos. Yeah, I, I can understand that uh, in yeah. the music you are using or the uh, the chanting, it was inside those two rooms. Yes, that was one of the places. Mm -hmm. And they built those two rooms as copies from uh, actual tombs uh, from uh, Abidus Temple. Yes, it looks like the, the Holy of Holies. Well, one of the Holy of Holies. <laughs> okay. And this is the inner view to the hotel. Very nice. Maybe not very big, but it's a miracle to have this hotel in Abydos, by the way. You can walk to Abydos. You, you can walk to the temple, the city, the first temple on the Osirian. Yes, this is what we do. We, we, we walk there. We literally, it's like a five minute walk. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the because we're going to arrive uh, after the closing time, so the next day we're going to visit Abidus Temple. And of course, we will not forget to talk about the helicopter and the submarine and the UFO. 
and you are going to hear my interesting opinion about it with evidences. Oh, yeah. And this is the famous Osiren, mm, or Osiren. <laughs> we will talk much about this, uh, how do you call it, complication. Yes. Because this is very complicated building. And uh, so far, you won't find any clear explanation, even in uh, mainstream stories. When they talk about it, they are very uh, limited. They want... They didn't want to talk much about it so because they know they are going to be very, very wrong. So they talk very little. They, about it. <laughs> they just don't talk about it at all. <laughs> and that was really interesting for me to learn last time that you said that there are tunnels in that go all the way to the Nile. Yes. And that's how far is that from so the first temple? It's about, uh, I, I think, about 10 miles away. Yeah, so like this structure that people normally see, they think that there's these little rooms, you know, they just, what you know, just go nowhere. But then some of these areas you can walk into actually expand all the way to the Nile. That's yes, insane. if you look to the screen, you can see uh, the pointer, you can see this area. Mm -hmm. Okay, we think it's like uh, two, three feet deep. No, actually, it is like five meters deep. Because of the uh, of the water, and because we don't visit the place uh, in a proper way, so we don't feel and we don't know the design of the place. This place is very deep and it has many rooms. Next time, if we uh, can do a private permission, I will take you to the front room, which is has a frame ceiling. Yes, I've seen pictures of that. Yeah, that room is unbelievable. It was completely dark and full of garbage and full of mud and full of water. Okay. Uh, number two, the story of uh, tunnels is almost in every Egyptian site. If we go back to the uh, place Hermopolis, one of the guards told me that from this point or closer to this point, the place I was standing to take the picture, Crossing under the Nile to Amarna, there is a tunnel connecting between those two sides. We're talking about an area of uh, 80 miles. 80? So 80 miles, 80, yes. Oh, wow. Okay. So we have tunnels everywhere, my friends. And to see the Serapium, you can have the... Um, the confident that yes, who can do the built the serapium can continue building so many tunnels because it will be the same machine. Yeah. And the day after we go to your beloved place, Dandara City, <laughs> Temple of Hatur. Temple of Hatur. Now you talk. I I will not talk about this place. You will talk about it. Uh, this place is very special to me, and it was one of those places that I really wasn't expecting the energy when I got there and the magnitude and the beauty when you walk into this temple um, mm -hmm. first you walk underneath the gate with the underside of the scarab mm -hmm. uh, and then you walk into the temple and it is absolutely stunningly gorgeous um, I believe it was um, it's been the French are there or correct am I am I correct in that they are there restore, trying to restore the hieroglyphs and all that and have done a beautiful job. The colors, I don't think I've ever Egyptian been Egyptian mission. Else. What we saw, are it, it used to be French, but nowadays uh, those are Egyptian uh, missions. Well, I'm very, I'm very happy to hear that because it seems like the French have way too many Egyptian artifacts in their museums and whatnot that they should return, <laughs> including us. But anyways, mm -hmm. the energy in the Hathor's Temple is very feminine very mothering, very nurturing. And it's interesting when you say that the place has energy. Uh, if you would go, for example, to Edfu Temple, it is very masculine energy for me when I walked in. But mm -hmm. when Hathor's Temple is just the most peaceful, loving, um, maternal energy that you can feel. And mm -hmm. you also have the Dendera Zodiac. You have the architecture, it's just, its just I, I don't even know how to explain how beautiful it is. 
and the reliefs on the ceilings, the hieroglyphs on the ceilings are some of the most intricate and uh, there's so much, the quantity is amazing. It is visually, pro yes, there's a picture of it right there. It's the beautiful Hathor temple in Dendera. Acoustics there are also very good. And you also have the, the stairwell, the stairwell at Dendera, which a lot of people might not know that's where I don't want to say the melting stairs, but that's what people have dubbed them. So you'll see a lot of a lot of things at Hathor's temple that are iconic Egyptian that you might not have known it was Hathor's temple. So it is a very special place. It is definitely one of my favorites. I think I say that about every single one, but I always look forward to going to Hathor's temple. It is truly like, I would say, probably my second most favorite mm -hmm. besides yeah. being inside the Great Pyramid. So in, in our last tour, did we watch uh, the video at the uh, meeting room? Did we watch the video at the meeting room? I'm not sure what you mean. There is uh, like a conference room and they have, uh, like the one in, uh, in uh, Aswan at the Obelisk. Oh, no. No, we did not. Okay, make sure that this time we see the video because they are saying something brilliant. They are talking about the healing uh operations inside the temple or, mm. or the people who the visitors who will used to come seeking uh or looking for healing so oh. it's them i'm not saying this they are the ones who are saying this oh okay yes every okay. once in a while they'll sneak out something yes. give us a little tidbit of uh information uh -huh. <laughs> and here is hatur Okay, and day nine, we arrive to Luxor, uh, of, or after Dandara, we drive to Luxor, and we stay at uh, the hotel. Uh, and the good news, uh, I used to use uh, Julieville, but not anymore, because it was in a bad need for renovation. So I'm using Steigenberger Luxor, which is a great hotel, by the way. But the great news that I heard last, my last tour in December, that they are renovating Julieville. Oh, that's that's good. Julie that's a beautiful place. Yes. I mean, the location is is unparalleled as far as it's like right on the uh, the Nile separates and makes this little island, and it's its own little island, and it's got its own little wildlife and beautiful views, and mm -hmm. it's a gorgeous area. It's a gorgeous hotel. Exactly. And uh, it's a special island, a private island for us. Okay. Um, of course, we're in Luxor. You know how much Luxor contains? How much from the antiquities of the world? Uh, one, we have discussed this, but I forget the exact percentage. Is one third of the antiquities of the whole world, not Egypt. I'm not talking about the antiquities of Egypt. Of the whole world, Luxor contains one third. What about Egypt itself as a whole? I think Egypt contains about uh, three quarters of the antiquities of the whole world. I would believe it. Yes, because Saqqara also has a lot, okay, and of course many sites. So visiting the valley, uh, the the valley of the kings, which is something I, you know, I even I like the name, uh, but the ancient name is much better than the modern name. The ancient name is called the valley of the gates of the kings. Okay. That is interesting. And, and that is the name we will, I will try to explain to our people, our friends, that what does it mean gate here? Is it a gate, an entrance to a tomb or gate to something else? And of course it will be a gate to something else. Yeah, that in my opinion, I would agree. <laughs> so we're gonna provide you with the ticket. Uh, we'll give you the chance to visit three tombs, which they are more than enough. And then we visit Hatshepsut Temple, and we visit the two giant statues of Memnon, used to be from one piece of a stone from red quartzite. We will talk about the massive uh, size of it and how they, and this is uh, this kind of stone from Cairo. So we know granite from Aswan, but red quartzite is from Cairo. Ah, we are using a very, very beautiful Nile cruise this time. 
I had this cruise in uh, 2016 and I was surprised with the size of the regular cabin, which in any other tomb is a suite. Uh, they're tomb. <laughs> no, yeah, and uh, the, normally they are the small, uh, mm. usually cruise ships have smaller rooms, but these rooms, I haven't been at this at this boat, but it, the rooms look huge. Exactly. It looks like, like Lemeridian. And as I say, uh, this size in any other boat, we, they call it a suite. Right. Special suite. Okay, so let's watch this video. I love the uh, huge uh, area of the lobby. And it has two windows, not just one. I think the audio might have ended on my end. There we go. Are you able to hear me? So I believe he has a computer problem at the moment. We'll see what happens with that. We might have to come back in a moment. I don't know what the heck is going on here. All right. Okay, I'm not sure if anybody can hear me out there, but what we're going to do is try to do a part two as soon as we figure out exactly what went wrong. I think his his system crashed. So we will uh, definitely get back with a part two, okay? Thank you, guys. We'll see you again soon.